Okay, howdy folks. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm going to do a quick check of our technological elements here before getting started. And uh, let's see, there you should now see my banjo. So if you are here to learn how to play Cumberland, Gla Cumberland Gap, claw hammer style, you are in the right place. And in particular, the version of Cumber Cumberland Gap that I played in a prior uh, Tune of the Week installment. All right, excellent. Looks like everything's good to go. And just for those who are unfamiliar, I'll say a few things about this series of uh, walkthrough videos, and then I will get started walking through this tab. All right, um, so as you um, can see uh, this uh, workshop is being aired live which means that if you have any questions as I move through this feel free to ask in the uh, chat area if you are watching this on the clawhammerbanjo.net site you will see a chat box underneath the video um, and this arrangement that I'm going to go through uh, is based on a tune of the week that I did a while back uh, that has been one of the most popular ones. So um, that's one of the reasons for covering it early here. Um, it's been uh, it's one that a lot of people have asked me to do uh, in this fashion. And so if you uh, don't have that tab that I'm going to be working through today, um, there is a link to where you can download that in the um, description uh, of this video. And if you are part of the Breakthrough Banjo course, that tab is, of course, part of the um, vault. And this um, series overall is, uh, is one in which we are working through the tabs and arrangements in the vault uh, for the Breakthrough Banjo course. And so uh, these live workshops will then be housed uh, inside the course so that you can watch the replay anytime. Um, and you will also find in the uh, description uh, a link to when these live workshops are going to air if you want to catch them when they come on YouTube you'll find that scheduled there also if you are subscribed to the Climber Banjo channel you will be alerted when those workshops begin um, and when those are going to take place um, also I should mention that you should find a link to the original version where uh, the original video where I play this song also in the video description okay and if any of you encounter uh, techniques here that you are unfamiliar with these are all covered as part of the uh, breakthrough band I mean it's sorry it's as part of the um, Clawhammer banjo and eight essential steps series that is uh, also linked in the description and is a free course that you can go through on YouTube all right let me check real quick for any comments All right, I think we're good. Excellent. Okay. So this uh, song, Tune Cumberland Gap, is the, the name itself is probably familiar to anyone who is uh, familiar with uh, traditional music, particularly uh, Southern traditional music. So. Uh, there are multiple versions of Cumberland Gap out there. There's a common one that's played by bluegrass uh, musicians in the key of G, and there's a famous version by Earl Scruggs, uh, and uh, that version is good. I, I uh, am particularly fond of the one that I am going to be teaching you today. This is, uh, instead of being in the key of G, this is in the key of D, 
and uh, is another one of the uh, another favored key of fiddlers. And there is actually a two-part version of this tune that I'm going to play, and a three-part version that you will hear uh, folks play. And I particularly like the three-part version. So you're going to learn the three-part version of Cumberland Gap in D. And it's important to know that that's what this is if you find yourself in the presence of other musicians who are wanting to play Cumberland Gap. It's important to first clarify what you, which Cumberland Gap they're talking about. And if it's and if it's the Cumberland Gap in D that's uh, two parts, you just drop one of the parts that I, uh, in the version that I'm going to give you. It's actually this tune minus one of the parts. All right. And uh, just in case you haven't seen these videos before, don't be alarmed by the fact that I have no head. Um, that's so you can see the tab, but my head still exists. All right. So, quick, uh, I just noticed a comment from Lyle who said, the last time he tried to tune the first string to E, it broke. Um, that should not happen. Uh, so, um, sometimes that can just be from an old string. Sometimes that can be from little burrs in the uh, nut. Um, but at any rate, um, you should be able to, unless you have the wrong gauges on there, uh, you can either uh, tune up uh, or use a capo uh, to get into the tuning that we're going to use today. So... Let's uh, actually start there with making sure that we're all uh, in uh, tuning or that we know what tuning we're using. So this song is in the key of D, which means uh, typically a banjo player is going to play it uh, in A, D, A, D, E tuning or double D, uh, which is the same as double C uh, tuning, just uh, two frets up. So uh, you could play this entire piece in double C tuning as it's as it's tabbed out there and it will sound just fine you'll just be in the key of C instead of the key of D so if you are worried about tuning up you can always do that just know that you'll be in a different key so if you want to jam with others in the key of D you're going to figure out a way to get into this uh, particular uh, D tuning um, so to review we've got an A on the fifth string A D on the fourth, an A on the third, a D on the second, and an E on the first. Sometimes you might use your ear to fine tune things a little bit if you, uh, after you've gone through the tuner, if it doesn't sound quite, quite on. All right, but you can fuss with that forever. Um, and so, like I said, if you wanted to play this in, in um, double C, it would just be G, C, G, C, D. Okay? All right, so let's begin here. Um, So that's the, uh, I just played through the entire tune there just so that we have it in our minds as we work through this. Um, still working on uh, playing the playing with this banjo in the position so that you can see it, uh, but I'm getting better at it. All right, so we are going to start with our very first measure, and I will, you should see a little blue box pop up. So I will use this little blue box to designate whatever measure we're working on at any given time. All right. So, first measure begins with uh, the open third string and a hammer on to the third string at the second fret, followed by a, a brush, 
and a, a, a pull off to the open string. So, and if you want to be fretting, you can fretting at the second fret of the first string as you're doing this. Since we are on the D major chord here, that's fine. You don't have to do that. I think it sounds okay either way. So that's what we're doing. But all we're doing after we brush that is just releasing that third string at second fret in a pull off. So without the brush, it sounds it would sound like this. And all we're doing is brushing and pulling off. Okay. Sometimes that uh, concept trips people up, so that's why I'm reviewing it there. And uh, the next note is the open second string. And then a slide from the second string second fret to the second string fourth fret. And I would recommend doing that with the index finger for reasons that will be clear in just a second. So that first measure again sounds like this. Okay, and now we notice that the first, um, the second, the first note of the second measure, which I will move my blue dot to. Okay, um, the first note is is in parentheses there, which indicates that it's a skip stroke. So rather than actually striking it on our way down with our picking finger, we're going to miss it on purpose um, to uh, add a little space into this uh, song, and we're going to follow it with a thumb on the fifth. Okay. Now, notice that the, the number in parentheses there is a 5, and our next note is going to be there. So wh what I'd recommend you do as you bring that, uh, that index finger down on the slide, go ahead and put that uh, middle finger on the 5th fret of the 1st string to have it ready. So we're beginning with a skip stroke, nothing, thumb on the 5th, and then with our finger on that 5th fret of the 1st string, we're going to play that note. So. Uh, that sounds like this with that slide. And now the next note we grab with our pinky, uh, the seventh fret of the first string. And then that same note again followed by a thumb on the fifth. Okay, so that whole measure, and I'll put the slide before it just so it's in context. Okay. Let's move to our third measure, keeping that ring, I mean that pinky finger on the seventh fret. We play that note again on the first string, and then release the pinky. Play the uh, first string at the fifth fret with our middle finger still in that spot, and then follow it with a thumb on the fifth. So that's. Now we back up to the second fret of the first string. We're going to pull off to the open string. And then hammer on from the open string to the second fret. So that whole measure is. Now let's move on to the fourth measure. We begin, we lift our uh, finger off that fret, play the open first string, followed by a drop thumb to the open second string. And then the third string, second fret, uh, and then a pull off to the open string. So that first half of the measure. And then the open second, followed by a brush thumb. And again, you can fret that, third, that first string at the second fret. So if you want to make that sound as a, as a D chord, or you can leave it unfretted and get that sound. So that whole measure. So those first four measures are, sorry, let me do the brush. And again, if we were to not do that skip note, you could just play that fit that first string with your finger on the first strip, first, uh, with the, on the fifth fret, so it would sound like this. Oops, sorry. I got it. There. Again, I like the uh, adding that little bit of space there. 
All right, let's move to our next set of measures. There we go. Check for any questions. All right. Hello, Otto. Welcome. Okay, so we're now on to the, what is our fifth measure in our A part still. So again, this looks familiar, hammering on to the third string and then and then pulling off to that same, to that open string. So open string to the second fret. And there, we're playing the same thing we did before, but we're just not brushing. Okay? And then the, uh, just like that measure before, the open second, then that same slide from the second fret of the, of the second string to the fourth fret, again with our index finger to get us in position. And then the same, uh, now let's move to the second uh, measure. We're gonna again skip that first note and play the thumb on the fifth afterwards. And then with our uh, middle finger still fretting that fifth fret of the first string, hit that note like we did before, grab the seventh fret of the first string, play that, and then the next time play it again, followed by a thumb on the fifth. So just like before. So this is essentially we're repeating the A part here, but the reason we're doing it a second time or showing you a second time is because I've included a variation the second time around where now we're moving up the neck to the 10th fret to play this last part of the A part. And we start with, our, uh, with the 10th fret of the first string, and I've got my pinky on it um, because I just moved my uh, pinky from the 7th to the 10th fret. And we're going to follow that with a thumb on the fifth. So now back to the seventh fret with my index on that first string. Play that followed by a thumb on the fifth. So now move up to the fifth fret of the first string. Play that followed by a drop thumb to the open second. And now we're going to go to the open first string, uh, followed by a hammer on to the second fret. So we're covering a bit of ground here uh, on this uh, first string. Again, this measure goes like this. Oops, let me move my blue box. Sorry, this is this is the measure we're referring to. Um, so we go tenth, starting with the tenth fret. Next measure. Let's just do that one measure. Okay. And if you are capoed, you may sometimes you may have to remember that what you normally think of as your tenth fret marker is is now your eighth fret, and you're running to that tenth fret is your as what you think of maybe as your twelfth when you are uncapoed. So that's one that's one advantage if you don't want to capo is that your markers stay the same. All right, and then we will close out this measure with the open, I mean this uh, A part, with the open first string followed by a drop thumb to the open second, and then a hammer on the first string to the, uh, sec to the uh, first string at the second fret, and then a little descending run down the strings, so lift that finger up again, play the open first, followed by a drop thumb to the open second, then the open third, followed by a thumb on the fifth. So that whole measure. All right. And so this, uh, you'll notice here that at the end of this, there's a, uh, indicates a repeat. So if we were going to be playing this full tune, we'd repeat this, um, whole entire A part again. Um, and I guess earlier when I said that this is a this is a variation on the A part, this is a, we're still, we just played through a single A part, um, but the uh, kind of the second, the going up the neck part is a is a variation of how you could play it. You could just play the, the first uh, three measures the same way um, both times. All right, so let's, let me check for any questions. 
So auto, yeah, we, I mentioned that earlier. So the ADADE tuning is just double C, but with a capo on the second fret. Um, and remember, you have to tune your fifth string up as well. Um, but the, the difference being that you can play this in double C, it's just going to be in the key of C rather than the key of D, which is fine if you're playing solo, but if you're playing in a jam, you want to probably be in the key of D, um, if that's where the other folks are. Um, and, but the, um, and if you're playing it along with me, you're, you're going to, the notes themselves will sound different, but the arrangement will work just fine. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Let's see. Let me move this down just a touch. So I'm just going to move this tab down uh, real quick to show you that there's a little two uh, over this part of the tab. So this is, this is indicating how we're ending the second time through the A part. So we've come through the A part again, and instead of that last measure I played before, this is our last measure now because we're leading into the B part. Okay? So just to make sure we're on the same page there. And again, if you listen to that first version that, that I demonstrated with, um, that should be clear that that's what we're doing. Okay, so again, this first measure is the last last measure of our A part as we've come through it on the second time. So we're going to go the open first string, followed by a drop thumb to the open second. And then the third string, the third string second fret, followed by a pull off to the open string. And then the open uh, second uh, string. And then again, if we want to hold our <clears throat> finger on the second fret of the first string, a brush followed by a thumb. So that whole uh, measure there is. And that's closed out our A part. Now we're going to be moving into the first measure of the, um, of the B part, which has our blue square. Okay. And so what we're going to do there is Basically, we're um, hammering on to a uh, what is an A chord in this tuning or a G chord in double C tuning. So, uh, and that I typically, uh, even though it's not tabbed there, as I would typically go ahead and put my fingers on that chord so that the other strings that are resonating sound in tune. So that would be placing my middle finger at the second fret of the um, fourth string. Uh, when we hammer on to this chord and then my ring finger on the second fret of the, of the second string So we'll go we'll strum from the open strings and then push our, put our fingers into those spots So again And if I didn't bring it down that full chord, I just did the note you see it would sound like this Which is okay But that makes it a little uh, a little fuller sounding and then so after that we just do a brush thumb, um, and the, in keeping our fingers down, we play the second string while we're fretting it at the second fret. And then we're going to play that same string again, and, and after we do slide into the fourth fret on the second string. So that whole measure. Let's move to the next measure. And again, kind of like we did before, there's another skip stroke after that slide. So we have nothing. Uh, we're going to bring our finger, I mean, our hand down, but miss the strings on purpose. But we're still going to keep our, uh, rest our thumb against the fifth and play that after we bring our hand down. And then play that second string while fretting at the second fret. So with the preceding slide, we get, and then into the second part of that measure, we're, with our fingers still on that second fret, we pick that and then uh, pull off to the open string, and then a brush thumb. And I think it sounds fine to just make that on the open strings. So that measure with the preceding slide. All 
right? Now let's move to the next measure. Here we're uh, hammering on to what would be uh, a G chord in this tuning or an F chord in double C tuning. And so that chord is the uh, index finger on the second fret of the, uh, of the um, third string and ring finger on third fret of the first string. So we can, uh, uh, what I would usually do is keep my, fi my uh, finger on that third fret and then hammer on to that third string second fret. And you could just play that open third without hammering on to the full chord. Either way sounds fine. And then with that chord fingered, play a brush thumb. And then release, uh, or sorry, sorry, keep the fingers in place. Play the open second. And then with your fingers still fretting that chord, play the third string, followed by a thumb on the fifth. So. There we go. All right. Check for any questions. Okay. All right, let's move to the Next set of measures, yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> hope we didn't get dizzy. All right, so now we still have our fingers on that chord, but we're going to play the third st string with it fretted at the second fret and then pull off to the uh, open third string. And now, releasing our fingers, we're gonna do that same hammer-on we did earlier onto what is our A chord again. And then follow that with a brush thumb. Okay, so that whole measure. And again, in that first part, I should mention that I'm bringing my finger back to the second fret of the third string after that hammer on, I mean, after that pull off when we brush that chord. So. And then again, same thing uh, to open the next measure. We're going to strum the open strings and then hammer our fingers onto that uh, A chord and then follow a brush thumb. And then similar to what we did before, keeping those fingers down, play the second string. And then a slide from the second string to the fourth string on the, I mean, from the second fret to the fourth fret on the second string. So that whole measure. And now, we are going to open again with this measure with a skip stroke, followed by a thumb on the fifth, and then back to the second fret of the second string, play that note. So again, skip stroke, thumb on the fifth, back to the second fret, and then the second half of that measure, play that note again, and then open, and then pull off to the open second. and then follow it with a brush thumb. So again, with the preceding slide. Final measure up top here. We're gonna again hammer on to that uh, uh, G chord shape. Follow that with a brush thumb with our finger on the chords. And then again, play the open second. And then the third string second fret, and uh, followed by a pull off to the open string. So, sorry. Okay. And now, we'll move to the final measure of this, whoops.
of this uh, B part here, which begins with the skip stroke uh, and then followed by a thumb on the fifth, as they always are. And then play the fourth string second fret. Release to the open. And then a brush thumb. So, let's see. Um... Just gonna play that in context. So that's what it sounds like uh, after that uh, last pull off in the preceding measure. And that concludes the uh, B part. And that's actually the extra part in this tune that, when, that makes it a three part tune. So if you hear the two-part tune, it'll it'll not have that little middle section, which doesn't repeat. So it's just a little extra section there that I that I really like. So uh, that's what I play when I play this tune for myself. All right. And now we'll conclude with the C part, which is um, pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, we're going to start with uh, strumming the open strings and just hammering on to the uh, so that to our our D chord, uh, which is just we is just the open strings plus the first string at the second fret. So, and then with our fingers still in place, playing a brush thumb, then uh, striking the first string with our fingers still in place and pulling off to the open, and then the open second followed by a thumb on the fifth. So. We've got, uh, again, uh, hammer on from the open third to the open second. And go ahead and pay, place your fingers on that chord shape, that uh, A chord shape. And follow with a brush thumb while your fingers are on those frets. And then we've got uh, two, two pull-offs in succession, both from the third string second fret to the open string. So that whole measure sounds like, oops, sorry. Again. Okay, uh, this, we basically just repeat those same two measures again. So just like before, uh, brush to the, uh, and then we hammer on to the second fret of the first string, followed by brush thumb. Then a pull off on that first string, followed by the open second and a thumb on the fifth. So again, the same thing we already did. Move to the next measure. Same thing again, like we said. Hammer on to the that uh, open third to the third second fret. Strum that chord. Now we're gonna hammer off I mean, hammer off, pull off, and then hammer on to that third string. So uh, from the third string, second fret to the open third, and then hammer on back to that, uh, that second fret. So that whole measure. Now still with that, our fingers on that chord shape, we play that open second. Let me move my marker. So we play the open second followed by a brush thumb with our fingers on that chord. Another uh, pull off from the third string second fret to the open third. And then a followed by a brush thumb. So that whole measure. And now, our closing measure starts with our fourth string at the fourth fret. I'm fretting that with my ring finger and pulling it to the pulling off to the open string. Then we go to the second fret of that fourth string, pulling off to the open string again. So then playing the open fourth, followed by a brush thumb.
So that's how that the whole uh, C part sounds. Let me just check for questions. Let's see. The fourth, there's a question here from Mark. The fourth and fifth measures of this part always trips me up. It's like that one. Ah. Uh, <laughs> um, let me see if this one is crooked. I've never thought of it. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, so, it, it, Mark, I, I think what trips you up is the fact that it is uh, six measures long, which is not typical. So usually, um, usually uh, the standard uh, length is eight. Um, and that, yeah, that, um, and that fifth measure there, that note feels like it comes a little bit early. Um, so yeah, it is, a, it, it is a little bit, uh, getting the timing there is, is, uh, a little bit different because, uh, because it's a little crooked as we say, because it deviates from the usual fiddle tune structure. Um, so I think really there, the, the best thing to do is uh, kind of having an idea of how this is to be played. Listen to it a bunch of times. Uh, listen to it to where you can hum how it's supposed to sound before you, before, it's specifically like how this, you know, how this way arrangement sounds, and then, and then see after doing that. It's usually when you're hearing something in your head and you're doing something different that it makes it really, really hard. <laughs> So, the, so I played there, uh, I played it two times through, and let me go back to, whoops, back to our final part, okay. Um, so essentially there, the first time through, you're going, doing that descending run, following it with a brush thumb, and then going back into the, the first part of the C part again, because there's a repeat there. So that's what you do the first time. And then if you're ending the tune, or, or and then if you're um, if you're continuing to go to the A part, what you'd want to do is also play play it like it's like it shows the first time through. So that would be going into the A part again. So only play this final measure here if you're ending it for good and ending on that open D on the fourth string. All right, so that is Cumberland Gap. Lo a wonderful tune, one of my favorites to play. Um, and it's always a pop, uh, it's one of the most popular tunes um, from the Tune of the Week series, I think because it's such a great melody. Um, so a great one to learn. All right, so that's it for this um, workshop. Again, if you uh, wanna catch the next one, uh, you can check out the schedule. Uh, which is linked in the description and you see at the bottom of the screen just go to clawhammerbanjo.net forward slash schedule you'll also see uh, the other the schedule of other workshops that uh, will be coming uh, the next uh, live workshop in the um, breakthrough banjo course uh, the, uh, the next module is going to be um, playing clawhammer banjo up the neck so meaning uh, beyond these first five frets, which for a lot of people is a scary proposition, but needn't be so. And uh, you'll also see the schedule there for the um, Ear Laboratory series of videos where we walk through tunes like this, but uh, show you kind of the process of how these arrangements are constructed by ear. So um, check out the schedule if you're interested in, in, in um, attending those. Otherwise, I will see you in the classroom next time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, everybody have a... Happy holiday. Thanks. <laughs>